Alright, I'm making this video to address the second most important question in The Witcher 3, and that is, who would win in a fight between Gontor Odim and the Unseen Elder? <laughs> We are now more than four years after the release of Blood and Wine and the introduction of the Unseen, and still people are wondering about and discussing this potential confrontation. So I finally decided to address it. Now you may be wondering why it took me so long, and I must admit it's because I'm not a big fan of the idea, but I'll do my best and we'll see how it goes. First off, a bit of an introduction for both of these people, if you can call them people at all. Oh, and there may be spoilers for The Witcher 3's expansions in this video, so be warned. Okay, starting with the Unseen Elder. He was of course introduced in Blood and Wine, and he's said to be one of the many, or at least one of the several other Elders, who stand on top of the vampire hierarchy. Ancient and powerful vampires, among the oldest and strongest. Mm -hmm. This is both when it comes to personal power as in speed and strength and whatnot. No, no, wait! As well as political influence, meaning that all other vampires are loyal to them and obey them without question. All vampires owe him fealty while they are here. We can see just how strong their influence is when even Deadlaf, who himself is said to be rather influential over other vampires, instantly obeys the Unseen Elder's command. In fact, it even appears that they can physically control other vampires, at least to a certain degree. Zetlas! As for the Unseen Elder specifically, we know that he is incredibly fast and strong, being able to kill Geralt in a blink of an eye, potentially even in his human form. Well, we don't actually know if he has a bat-like ultimate form, similar to Detlaf and Regis, but I think it's likely that he does. So in terms of sheer strength and speed, he is basically unmatched in this world. In terms of his personality and intellect, we can't really say much, mostly because he won't say much. It was clear each word was a great effort. Interacting with others, it seems, it causes him physical pain. But I think it's safe to assume that he's not a mindless beast and is at least as intelligent and sentient as the average higher vampire. Oh, and of course, it is also very likely that the Elder can only be killed by another Elder or another Higher Vampire. However, and we're not entirely sure as well, but perhaps if enough damage is done to him, it might take him years or decades to regenerate back to full health. Now, I'm saying we're not sure about these things because we know them to be true about Higher Vampires, and I only assume that he is not too different than they are. Okay, now let's have a few words about the Hearts of Stone expansion, and more specifically, Gontor Odim. Hello. No, I fear this is no dream, my friend. He is... gosh, we don't know what he is, really. Geralt considers that he may be a djinn or a demon a couple of times. Hmm. Could be a mage, a demon, or a djinn. And I believe the demon speculation is closer to the truth or if not an actual demon, then at least something similar. Here are several clues that I think lead us in that direction. Number one, whenever he appears, someone always says devil or something similar. I hate like devils, make me stomach churn. What the devil? Why is there a fly in my soup? Number two, he is mentioned alongside occult magic and practices in conversations with Olgird and the blind professor. Number three, he refuses to share his real name with Geralt, because he claims that everyone who learns it either dies or faces a worse fate. This one time I shall spare you and not grant your wish. All who have learned my true name are now either dead or have met an even worse fate. Yet I still need you. And the whole power of names idea is usually associated with demons. Number four, he is evil? On top of tricking people and focusing on the worst about them, he enjoys seeing them suffer. 
We can see that in his interactions with Vladimir, as well as in the things he did to the professor. If you read the notes in his room, you'll find about the cruel ways in which Gontor Odim manipulated his dreams. Number 5. The capital letters of his name ironically form the word God. I promise he'll not die. <laughs> okay, that's enough numbers. Now, in terms of personal power, we don't really know the extent. It is implied that he is basically eternal and has always existed. There are records of encounters dating back thousands of years in many cultures under many names, but always as evil incarnate. At least to some extent he can control time and space. Big! Smart treat! He may even not be truly corporeal. He can vanish and appear out of nowhere, he can float or something, walk through the air, and he can potentially see the future too. There will come a time when fear will engulf her, instill courage in her, but do not act in her stead. And never, ever let her feel as if you've sold her out. Ten, the twenty. So with that said, I think it's difficult to compare Odim to the Unseen Elder. The problem is that their powers manifest in fundamentally different ways. The Unseen Elder's power is very much upfront, in your face, so to speak. He'll charge at you and tear you to pieces, or he'll have his vampires do it for him if he doesn't feel like socializing, while the extent and limits of Odim's power are shrouded in mysticism and rooted in folk traditions, and are more similar to other inexplicable forces in this world, such as destiny, the law of surprise, um, the power of a word once given, and so on. It is difficult to explain why he has to follow any rules at all. Why disappear for a while if he's beaten at his own game, for example? Or why can't he just tear your soul away if he craves it so much, unless you fail your pact with him? But okay, if the two are absolutely forced to fight one another, what would happen? First off, I don't think you can achieve much by trying to hurt Gontor Odim physically. Despite how hot-headed and aggressive Olgierd can be, he never really tries to harm Odim in any conventional way. As far as we know, the only way to temporarily defeat him would be to beat him at his own game of riddles and pacts, etc. Sadly, given how unstable the Unseen Elder can be, Zetlath! I doubt he'll manage to do it, especially if he is unprepared. Now, if he is prepared, that's another story. He could perhaps get Regis and Oriana to help him, they'll investigate and figure out a way to outsmart Odim, which could work. Now, you might say that's not fair, but then again, the Unseen Elder's influence over other vampires, as we said, is part of what defines him. On the other hand, if Gontor for some reason decides to act against the Elder, he will definitely have the upper hand. I'm not sure if his power over time will work on vampires, and if it does, then all the strength and speed of the Elder will go to waste. And if Sianna was able to manipulate Detlaf into killing his friend, I have little doubt that Odim will be able to trick another vampire into killing the Elder for him. But if for some reason the time-stopping powers don't work on vampires, well then, we probably won't go anywhere, and then Gontor would have to resort to fighting the Unseen through a proxy. But most proxies I can think of will have quite the difficult time beating the Elder, so it is possible that neither of them will be able to defeat the other. Now another question is, do vampires have souls? And if they don't have souls, then perhaps Odim won't even feel the need to kill the Elder. Instead, he may just choose to torment him somehow, by forcing him to socialize, perhaps? So ultimately, I suppose Odim is the winner, since I can see how he may be able to find a way of actually killing the Elder, assuming that the Elder's mortality is similar to that of the ordinary Higher Vampire. Damn you, Odim! <laughs> Point for me! While the Elder, on the other hand, may be able to only temporarily banish Odim. And there we have it. Tell me what you guys thought of everything I said in this video. I'm sure lots of you have something to say on the matter, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Alright, 
Thank you very much for watching and for your support on the YouTube membership as well as Patreon. And until the next video, stay tuned and be good.